Hey guys, I'm back. I'm here to do a recap. Sorry we haven't done it in a while. I have no good excuse. I just haven't. Um, so sorry. But last week we had our worship night. It was our fifth Wednesday. So I thought tonight would be a good night to kind of get you back on focus on Hosea. Um, just recap it and let you guys remember where we've been at for the last three weeks. We start off Hosea because it's a book that we've read and really feel like it's so powerful. It's so important for you guys to hear these things. Um, Hosea is a book that is absolutely relevant to today's world. Um, you can read it over and over and over again and get something else new out of it and fresh out of it because it's so, so deep and so rich. In fact, we've had a hard time not staying on like two verses and just preaching on that for a month because it's just such a rich, rich book. So I'm hoping that you guys are reading this on your own or even after we're done that you reread it and get more out of it. Um, but here's a quick recap. So Hosea was a prophet. He had to marry a prostitute because they were going to be a living example of how the, um, how God's people, how Israel was treating him, how they had one master, one husband, but they kept thinking that if they went out and got other lovers, um, other idols or other gods, that they'd be better off. And here's God who is their husband and they're cheating on him. And I remember I asked you guys if, what you thought true love was and um, how God's love is the only true love for us because it's that redeeming love that he keeps coming after us. Um, I spent a lot of time in Hosea 2 because I love Hosea 2 <laughs> um, about how, you know, Israel kept going after other level, other lovers, other idols. And remember I told you an idol is anything that takes your focus off God. It could be something that you think is actually kind of positive, like church stuff or homework. But if you're not spending time on your relationship with God, it's become an idol in your life. And you guys have to check those things. It could be definitely relationships. I think relationships are a huge thing that are idols in our lives. Anything that takes our focus away from our relationship with God. And so they, Hosea or Gomer kept going back to her lovers because she thought they were the ones providing for her. But really all along it was God providing for her. And how God, this is my favorite, <laughs> in Hosea 2, 14, therefore I'm going to allure her I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her. I love that part because sometimes when we're in the desert, we think we are in the worst place in the world and, you know, this is the punishment. But actually, it was God alluring us there so he can speak to us, so he can talk to our hearts and tenderly teach us. Um, I, I absolutely love this whole book. <laughs> and remember, uh, Hosea 2.19, I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice and love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. Betroth means marriage. We, we discussed that. And so he is going to marry us into his righteousness. We're two or more are joined there, one. So anything I have is Brad's and anything Brad's has is mine. So when God says he's going to marry us, and he's going to, in righteousness and justice, we have his righteousness and justice. We have his love and compassion. We have his faithfulness. And we will acknowledge the Lord. Oh, I just love everything about this. Um, and then the next week, Brad spent a lot of time on chapter 3. Like I said, we've had such a hard time not just staying on like two verses. Because it's so powerful. But he really focused on the part where... Okay, so here's Gomer keeps going out and cheating on Hosea, and there comes a point where she's sold herself so deeply into this slavery that he has to buy her back. He has to buy back his wife. That's already should be his to have, but she's gone so far away from him that he has to purchase her back to himself. And the fact that he was willing to do that after she's gone out and cheated on him just amazes me. It just proves to me even more that God's love is so much greater for us than what we can ever understand. His redemption is, oh, it's just amazing. So he spent a lot of time on that, um, on God redeeming us and buying us back to himself through his son, Jesus. Um, we would be lost if he would not have sent his son 
to die for us and bought us back. He ransomed us. Just amazing. I love this book. Um, and then the last week before we had our worship night, he really spent a lot of time on um, chapter 5. And it was about, oh, you know what? I skipped 4. Anyway, 4 is really about them saying sorry, kind of. The children of Israel saying, okay, God, we're sorry that we've been prostituting ourselves. We see that you bought us back. You know, oops. And God calling him out and saying, um, you're just telling me that. You're not feeling that with your heart. God can absolutely see our hearts, guys. And he knows when your apology is genuine and when you're really ready to make a change. And he also knows when you're just trying to sound good. So please, 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 please don't try to fake God or try to, you know, pretend that everything's all right and you know I said I'm sorry and then go on continuing to cheat on God with other things because he knows and he knows it's all hogwash so you might as well have not even done it um and then chapter five is about the leaders how the leaders of Israel actually helped lead their people astray they helped lead them to these other gods they they themselves the leaders didn't think that God was powerful enough. So they turned to the other gods. They turned to the other camps for help. And God is like, hello, I've been the one all along helping you guys out. You are my people. So Brad was telling us as leaders, we need to make sure that we are living a life and that when we are in trouble, that our first focus is God. Because if it's not for us, how are we going to lead other people to him? We're going to lead them astray. And that is a dangerous position to be in. Um, and then, chapter, I think he's going to be on chapter 7 tonight. So chapter 6 was, this is my favorite verse out of chapter 6. God says, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, an acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. So what God is saying is, I would rather you... Show mercy to your neighbor than to have a sacrifice. You know, instead of like, oh, well, I go to church. You know, you sacrifice your time, but you are so mean to people. He's He sees through that stuff, guys. He would rather you acknowledge him and call out to him than, you know, to have burnt offerings. You know, to just like give something, like give him the offering or just do whatever, um you think is good to win his approval. He'd rather you just acknowledge him as the Lord. Um, he sees through us, guys. <laughs> and he sees our hearts. And um, he is more than willing to buy us back over and over and to lead us into the desert and speak tenderly to us, even though we don't deserve it. That first week I told was talking about true love and true love um, we, we don't even really know it as people, honestly, because we fall in love with people because they have something to offer or they're lovable or we like them. And that leads, um, you to fall out of love just as quick as soon as they are not making you happy anymore. Um, but God loves us because he is love. He doesn't know anything else but to love us. And if you guys are willing and open to that love, your life will change. If you could not read love through the world's eyes and just see it how he's willing to give it, um, everything will be changed. He's the only one who could truly love us. I told you guys, I love Brad, and I know Brad loves me, and I know we're in this life together, but he cannot possibly love me as much as God, and I cannot possibly love him as much as God does. So that hole or that part in me can only be filled by God. And he and I respect that in each other and I respect the fact that we each need to have our own relationship with God. True love isn't this smothering thing that you always have to be together or it's just a partnership in this lifetime. God is the only one who could truly fill that void for you guys. Um, I'm excited to see where Brad goes tonight with 7 and 8. Again, please read Hosea for yourself. You'll get so much out of it. And take it slow because it is so deep and rich. Um, I'm glad we got to do this. And I'm here.
in the back. And I uh, love you guys. Welcome to summer. We're going to finish out this Hosea together. And um, love you guys. Bye. We're going to do announcements. Announcements. Yay, we're on summertime. It's living's easy. All kinds of good stuff. Um, the only really big, huge thing we have to announce is uh, Lifeguard Academy. That is going to start with the camp on July... 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and so, coming home on Wednesday the 25th. So we've invited some of you guys to be the counselors, but that doesn't mean you can't be in Lifeguard Academy once we get home. Um, this is just kind of like the initial um, few, and that's. but that doesn't mean you can't ever be a lifeguard. And what else do we have? Remember to buy your wristbands for $3 at the snack bar. Remember, there's a snack there bar. There is a snack bar. So bring yes. your money. Bring your money. For snack bar. For snack bars. There's good stuff. Oh, and then we're going to be giving out prizes if you bring friends and stuff. So, oh, I might not have been able to announce that. Ah, <laughs> to jump again. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Erase that. And, um, oh, we have something coming up pretty exciting on January 15th. I know it's a long time away, but what what is that? It's about six months away. About seven. Seven. Bad mm -hmm. math. But what 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 should we be looking for? Well, we should be seeing some growth. Um, we should be seeing some signs of fatigue. <laughs> we should be seeing some signs of um, mood swings <laughs> happening. Um, for those of you that don't understand. We are proudly to announce that Mandy is with child. <laughs> with child. <laughs> she is like Mary. She is with child. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Mandy is I'm, pregnant. Yay. So I'm not just getting fat. Yeah. <laughs> so yay, you guys are like the first in the church to know, so your parents probably don't even know yet. But we love, oops, sorry. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. We love you guys. You're part of our family. And so our family is growing. Um, love you. Bye.